So the big thing we were trying to learn here was this idea of the crossed aldol condensation. So if you're setting up a crossed aldol condensation, remember you have to try to set it up so one of the molecules will be the clear nucleophile and one will be the clear electrophile. So how do you do that? Well, first of all, you should make sure that one of the molecules has no alpha hydrogens. You should make one of the molecules have no alpha hydrogens. That way you don't need to worry about it forming the enolate. Only one of the molecules should form the enolate. And this same molecule, since it doesn't have any alpha hydrogens, you want it to be the electrophile. So this same molecule, you need to make sure that it's more electrophilic than the other molecule. Well, how can we make this more electrophilic by making it the aldehyde or the ketone? Uh, by making it um, more electrophilic? Uh, by making it the ketone. Who's going to be more electrophilic, the aldehyde or the ketone? Oh, I'm sorry, the aldehyde will be. That's right. This will be more electrophilic. And why is this more electrophilic than this? Because there's no alkyl groups that are electron donating. It's right. just hydrogens. That's right. This doesn't have anything to stabilize this delta positive. So we want one molecule to have no alpha hydrogens and be more electrophilic, which usually means that you want it to be an aldehyde. And then you want the other molecule, it has alpha hydrogens, so it will form the nucleophilic enolate, and you want it to be less electrophilic. So usually this should be a ketone. So those are the two types of molecules you need to put together to get a successful crossed aldol condensation. Of course, you could do a crossed aldol condensation that didn't match these characteristics, but then it wouldn't be very successful because you would get a whole mix of products. Right. That's, a, that's actually a common test question. Sometimes they'll give you a crossed aldol condensation that isn't set up very well, and they'll say, predict all the products. And there could be a maximum of four products. Because mm -hmm. if you have A, two molecules, A and B, well, then you could have A attack B, you could have B attack A, you could have A attack A, or you could have B attack B. Mm -hmm. So if you set up a poor crossed aldol condensation where everyone can attack everybody else, you can get a whole bunch of products, and that's a common type of question. Mm -hmm. But if you want to do a good synthesis, you want to do it so one molecule has no alpha hydrogens and it's more electrophilic. Usually that's the aldehyde, so it acts like the electrophile. And the other molecule does have alpha hydrogens, so it can form the enolate. And it should be less electrophilic, usually that would make it a So in the absence of heat, you'd get one product with heat, you would get... Um... Would you get, with heat, would you get any of the first product? You mean this one? Yeah. Yeah, even with heat, you still only get one product. Okay. It's just that you get this product. Um, so yeah, with heat, the reaction would move on to here. Uh, especially if you're somehow, say, removing the hydroxide that's leaving so you can pull the reaction forward, basically. So the, the key for whether you're going to get more than one product or not is not whether there's heat or not. It's whether you've set up the crossed aldol condensation well. Whether there's heat or not just determines what the product will be. Okay. With, in cold conditions, you would get this product, and in hot conditions, you would get this product. Right, so your instructor said, crossed aldol condensations are most successful if one of the reactants has no alpha hydrogen, and therefore cannot form an enolate. That's what we saw here. And we reminded ourselves, alpha hydrogens are not the same thing as aldehyde hydrogens. It's not the aldehyde hydrogens that can get taken here that can get deprotonated. Right. And the other reactant should have the more... Re, um, and the same reactant... Actually, there's a mistake in your instructor's lecture notes here. You should have said that the same reactant should have the more reactive carbonyl group, uh, which would namely make it an aldehyde. Mm -hmm. Last time we were talking about the aldol condensation, which is probably the most important thing in this chapter. There's a lot of important information here, but aldol condensation is very important. And we've been talking about crossed aldol condensation. Remember that the aldol condensation is when one aldehyde or ketone attacks another aldehyde or ketone. Is that category three? Yes, thank you. That's good that you know the categories. Good, correction. Aldol condensation is when one aldehyde or ketone attacks another aldehyde or ketone. And therefore, it's just another example of nucleophilic attack on aldehydes or ketones. So it falls into the three or four categories we talked about before. 
And we know that under cold conditions, it falls into category one, and under hot conditions, it falls into category three. So I've simply put the models back up here on the page. Okay. I suggest that it's all, if you're having trouble with an aldol condensation, it's helpful just to write this general model so you can fit it into that general model there. What is it that makes the aldol condensation a little bit more difficult than a normal aldehyde or ketone reaction, just that the nucleophile is a little bit more complicated? Who is the nucleophile in an aldol condensation? It's another ketone or aldehyde. That's right. You and to be specific, which particular atom is the nucleophile? The, um, the uh, alpha carbon. That's right. The deprotonated alpha carbon. So this is just a more complicated nucleophile than usual. Maybe I'll even label this with an alpha to remind ourselves that this would be the alpha carbon in an aldol condensation. And that means that the nucleophile will also have its own carbonyl group, which, uh, which puts in some extra confusion. The carbonyl it's attacking won't look like a carbonyl anymore. It'll either be an alcohol or the oxygen will be gone altogether. But there will still be a carbonyl next to the alpha carbon that attacked. We saw a bunch of examples of that. Now, we were last time talking about the crossed aldol condensation, when two different aldehydes or ketones are interacting with each other. And we remembered that we want to set it up so that there will only be one type of attack. For example, we talked about if you have two molecules A and B, theoretically, you could have A attack A, A attack B, B attack A, or B attack B, four different products. But we want to set it up so there's really only going to be one mode of attack. That is, we want one of the molecules to be purely the electrophile and not the nucleophile. Well, what type of role would this molecule play, nucleophile or electrophile? It's going to be the, um, it's going to be the electrophile. That's right, which means I should put in these stars to show this is the carbonyl that's going to get attacked. How do you know that it can't be the nucleophile? Uh, because it has no alpha carbon. That's right. So it certainly has no alpha hydrogens. As we talked about, we don't want to think that these are the alpha hydrogens. These are aldehyde hydrogens that are not going to do anything interesting. So this would play the role of the starred carbon, not the alpha carbon. This would be the electrophile. What's the name of this compound? Formaldehyde. Good, that's the common name. Form, because one carbon, and then aldehyde is a logical name. What's the name of this compound? We haven't really talked about this much. I don't know if you know the name of this compound. So what type of functional group do we have here? An alcohol. Or a, it's um, starting stuff. Aldehyde. It is an aldehyde. We simply need to memorize that CHO is a, is a standard conventional condensed okay. notation for aldehydes. So CHO indicates an aldehyde. If you actually count the bonds here, you couldn't, this can't be an alcohol because there wouldn't be enough bonds in the carbon. But it's better just to have memorized that CHO is a condensed notation for aldehydes. So we can rewrite it like this. And the, the standard name for this is benzaldehyde. That seems kind of logical. It's an aldehyde on a benzene ring. Now, would this play the role of the electrophile or the nucleophile in an aldol condensation? When you're ready. It can play the, it, well, uh, it's going to play the role as an electrophile, uh, uh, yeah, because there's no, uh, there's no alpha hydrogen. That's right. Clearly there's no alpha hydrogen on the right hand side because there's no alpha carbon. Now is there an alpha carbon on the left? Yes, there is an alpha carbon, but if we count carefully we can see there are no hydrogens on here because there's already four bonds to carbons. One, two, then three, four. Four bonds to carbon, so there's no room for any alpha hydrogens here. So unlike this molecule, this does have an alpha carbon, but still no alpha hydrogens. So it can't form an enolate, because an enolate form comes when you deprotonate the alpha carbon. So I'm going to erase the alpha, because that's not going to be reactive here. Again, we're going to be attacking electrophilically. We're going to be, this carbon will be acting like an electrophile. This is a pretty common technique, I think for creating a aldehyde with no alpha carbons to have be, uh, a benzene ring because there's no hydrogens on that. Let's decide whether this would act as the electrophile or the nucleophile. And to start with, we need to figure out what type of functional group we have here. An aldehyde. 
we just talked about how this is the conventional notation, not for an alcohol, but for an, alco uh, for an aldehyde. By the way, if it was an alcohol, it would look like this. That would be the way we'd write an, uh, a alcohol. And it's going to be an electrophile. That's right. Why is that? Because there's no um, alpha hydrogen. Pretty much the same deal as we have here. There is an alpha carbon, but it has no alpha hydrogens, so it can't be deprotonated and formed an enolase. So that also has to play the role. And what kind of molecule is that? Or what's the name? Beats me. <laughs> Furferol. Oh, okay. Hmm. Furferol. Hmm. That's a good name to bring up at a cocktail party or whatever. If anyone asks you about furfrol, now you know what it is. Okay. I guess that's just a common name for this molecule. Right. Basically, we just have a bunch of different functional groups here. For, for al, because it's an aldehyde. And these types of rings are often called furan rings. I guess that's where that's coming from.